subscribe and hit the bell icon. The electric eel. everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Look at this, Hero. It's a boat I made out of leaves. Now, time to test it out. Hmm, it looks kind of lonely. I know, I'll make a boat for you too, Hero. There, now we can have a boat race. We'll start blowing our boats on the count of three. Ready, Hero? One, two, three. <laughs> ah! Could it be some kind of snake? We must have disturbed it with our boat race. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is an electric eel. An electric eel? Can it make electricity? It sure can. An electric eel is a kind of fish that uses electricity to stun its prey and defend itself from predators. The electric eel can produce electricity because it has special organs that allow it to store power, just like batteries. That's a really neat skill. What else does the electric eel use its electricity for? The electric eel has poor eyesight so it uses electricity to sense its surroundings and find prey. The electric eel does this by releasing a low-level electric charge, which it uses like a radar. I see. What kind of food do electric eels eat? Electric eels eat sea creatures like fish, crabs, and shrimps. Some also eat small animals like frogs and birds. Electric eels live in South America where they can be found in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. Hmm, it's too dangerous for the fish in our pond to live with the electric eel. We should bring the electric eel back to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. There. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, it's a river monster. That's not a river monster, Leo. That's an anaconda. Anacondas are the largest snakes in the world. They also have large appetites and prey on anything they can eat. It's wrapping itself around the float. The anaconda must think the jeep is food. No, Hero. The anaconda can swallow you whole. We could get the electric eel to help us. It can zap the anaconda and scare it away. Be careful, Katie. I have these rubber gloves to protect me from the eel's electricity. I have to make sure I don't touch the water with my skin. <clears throat> the electric eel is too heavy. Let me help you, Katie. goes. The electric eel zapped the anaconda. Look, it's letting go of the float. Now, let's put the eel back in the tank and get out of here. What should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the electric eel's home, just look for calm, muddy water. Not for a chubby otter or a fly swatter, but look for calm, muddy water. I see. So not for a chubby otter or a fly swatter, but, but look, look for, for calm, calm muddy, muddy water. water. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the electric eel's home, 
You have to look for calm, muddy water. Good luck. Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be calm and muddy water. Could that be the electric eel's home? No, the water is too clear. Eels prefer muddy water. Let's continue. Is that the electric eel's home? Hmm, the water is muddy, but the water doesn't look calm at all. So let's move on. What about this place? The water seems calm, and it's muddy. So this is a perfect home for the electric eel. Good work, Hero. We're coming over. We did it. We found the electric eel's home. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! found an electric eel in our garden. We learned that electric eels produce electricity to stun prey and scare away predators. We also learned that electric eels live in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. So we went to the Orinoco River and brought the electric eel back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The leafy sea dragon. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got, Hero. It's a marine aquarium, and it has special saltwater plants in it. Look at that pretty seaweed, Hero. It looks like it has eyes. <gasps> it moved. Did you see that too? What do you think? Is this seaweed or an animal? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what is it? You won't believe it, Leo. It's an animal. The name of this animal is the leafy sea dragon. It's a type of fish. Leafy sea dragons are similar to the more famous seahorses. It looks more like seaweed than a seahorse. I wonder if it eats seaweed. No, it doesn't. The leafy sea dragon is a carnivore which means it feeds on other animals like tiny shellfish and shrimp. It has a mouth that looks like a straw, which it uses to suck up its food. So there's no food for the leafy sea dragon in the aquarium. The aquarium isn't a good home for the leafy sea dragon anyway. It needs to live in the sea, where there's plenty of food for it. And the best place for leafy sea dragons is in the waters of southern Australia. That's the only place in the world where they can be found and also where they can be safe. There are laws in Australia to protect leafy sea dragons. People are not allowed to remove these rare animals from the sea without permission. Then let's take the leafy sea dragon back home so it can stay where it's protected. Come and join us. Yes, let's go. See you downstairs. Come on, everybody. Join me in this party. One, two, here we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Come on, everybody. Join me in this party. One, two, it's your turn for lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two. Ranger Rocky, you got here fast. What's going on? I want to make sure nobody comes too close. A storm just hit this area, and it washed a heap of seaweed ashore. Leafy sea dragons live among seaweed, so they often get washed ashore with the seaweed when the waters get rough. Oh, no! 
So there might be leafy sea dragons lying in the seaweed? I'm afraid so, Katie. I'm looking through the seaweed to find them. I want to put them back in the water quickly so that they'll survive. We'll help you, Ranger Rocky. That would be great. Come in. Look, I just found a leafy sea dragon in this pile of seaweed. If you find any leafy sea dragons, put them in here. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Good job, Junior Rangers. We found all the leafy sea dragons. Since we're taking our leafy sea dragon back to its natural home, we can also bring these, Ranger Rocky. That's wonderful, Leo. Please, take this. But what should we look for now? If you want to find the leafy sea dragons a home, just look for a lot of sea grass in the sea, not for a busy bee or a rusty old key but look for a lot of seagrass in the sea. I see. So not for a busy bee or a rusty old key, but, but look for a lot, lot of seagrass sea in, in the sea. sea. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the leafy sea dragons a home, you have to look for a lot of seagrass in the sea. Good luck. Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be a good home for the leafy sea dragons. Is that a good home for the leafy sea dragons? No, there are fishing nets in the sea. Leafy sea dragons can get caught in them. Let's look somewhere else. So how about this place? Hmm, it's quiet, but there is no seagrass in the water. Next! Is this a good home for the leafy sea dragons? Yes, it is. There is a lot of seagrass in the sea. Well done, Hero. We're coming over. Look at how much seagrass there is. This will be a great home for the leafy sea dragons. There they go. Stay safe, leafy sea dragons. We did it. We found the leafy sea dragons a home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! found a leafy sea dragon in my marine aquarium. We learned that leafy sea dragons are very rare animals that look like seaweed. They hide in seaweed so that other animals can't spot them. And we took the leafy sea dragon home to Australia because leafy sea dragons are protected there. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The White Spotted Bamboo Shark. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. It's such a warm day, so I'm gonna let my pet turtle cool off in the pond. <laughs> Did I give you an idea, Hero? Wow, look at that big fish. It's trying to grab the turtle. There you go. I didn't know we had such a big fish in our pond. Let me scoop it out with the tank. Hey, this big fish looks like a small shark. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything about the baby shark? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a white spotted bamboo shark, but it's not a baby. It's a young adult. But I thought sharks were big and scary animals. Not all sharks are big and dangerous, Leo. 
Adult bamboo sharks will not grow longer than one meter in length, so this bamboo shark is almost fully grown. And bamboo sharks are harmless to humans. So where does the bamboo shark come from? White-spotted bamboo sharks are found in coral reefs in the Pacific Ocean around Southeast Asia. What's a coral reef? A coral reef is made up of tiny animals called polyps. Polyps stay in one place and form the shapes of the coral reef. A coral reef can be very colorful and is filled with many living creatures, such as plants and fish. Wow! Coral reefs are beautiful! Bamboo sharks live in coral reefs because most of the small animals they eat are found there. The bamboo shark uses his small teeth to hold onto its prey and crush them. The coral reef also provides protection for the bamboo shark because there are a lot of places to hide from predators. Hmm. Our pond doesn't have a coral reef, so we should bring the bamboo shark back to where it belongs. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. With our Jeep, we should get there in no time. A big shark is following us, Leo. Don't worry, Katie. I'll go a little faster. It's one of the great white sharks, the great hunters of the sea. They can swim very fast, and they sometimes eat smaller sharks. As long as we're in the Jeep, we're safe. It's another great white shark. Leo, the bamboo shark has fallen into the sea. Come back, hero. It's too dangerous. The sharks are coming this way. Where's hero? I can't see him. Look, hero found a reef. He's standing on it. That's great. The great white sharks won't be able to swim there. Full speed ahead. The bamboo shark is almost on the other side. We made it. We escaped the big sharks. Hmm, so what should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger Rocky! If you want to find a home for the bamboo shark, just look for a safe spot in the coral reef. Not for a naughty thief or a pretty autumn leaf, but look for a safe spot in the coral reef. I see. So not for a naughty thief or a pretty autumn leaf, but look for a safe spot in the coral reef. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find a home for the bamboo shark, you have to look for a safe spot in the coral reef. Good luck! <laughs> Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be a safe spot in the coral reef. Is that a safe spot? Hmm, it looks safe but there's no colorful coral reef. So let's continue. Is that a safe spot? Hmm, it's a coral reef, but what are all those spiky things? That doesn't look safe at all. So let's look somewhere else. Is that a safe spot? It's a coral reef and there are no scary animals. So yes, that is a safe spot for the bamboo shark. Good work, Hero. We're coming over. Enjoy, Bamboo Shark. We did it. 
We found a new home for the bamboo shark. Hooray! Yay! We found a white spotted bamboo shark in our pond. We learned that bamboo sharks are small and harmless to humans, and that they live in the coral reefs of the Pacific Ocean. So we brought the bamboo shark to a safe spot in a colorful coral reef. Good job, children! You did it! You are amazing wildlife rangers. <laughs> <laughs>